the thing we have to be mindful of with a plant-based, relatively carbohydrate-heavy diet is blood sugar instability Mm -hmm. and also given that you have low testosterone. So this can be very healthy, but we want to make sure you have enough protein and enough fat. So the nuts are good. We can do avocado. We can do olives, Mm -hmm. olive oils, fish occasionally. You're doing a branch chain amino acid, collagen powder supplement, creatine supplement, which is going to promote Mm -hmm. that like muscle building because muscle, we can't do like jump into heavy lifting, but starting to rebuild that muscle, the amino acid bank is protective. Last week, we got started into a very interesting and I think important for our times case with one of our women's health coach graduates and alumni association members, Orle Marie. She really gave us a very insightful and complete story of what has been going on with her health that we're seeing all the time in our clinic. This intersection overlay between an autoimmune or chronic inflammatory condition that might be underlying and then the person transitions into the perimenopausal years and then in their last four years increasingly we're seeing people in our clinic with more severe or moderate long COVID, which can last from months to years. So if you're dealing with a chronic inflammatory condition or an autoimmune condition or a chronic post-viral condition, we always have to take that seven step step-by-step system to unwind all of the complexity of, of that by helping the systems get healthier and healthier. And in this episode, we're going to get deeper into some of the solutions that Orle can start to implement into her life and integrating the piece of the puzzle around the nervous system's interaction with the immune, digestive, and even endocrine systems. Download this episode. Feel free to take notes, listen to it multiple times, and let's see if we're on the same page. If you learned something new, if you would have done the same things in your clinic, if you have other things to share with us, absolutely leave a comment on on our YouTube channel, send us a note through our social media channels, uh, send us a note to support at integrativewomenshealthinstitute.com. I think having complex conversations like this is what podcasting is so valuable for. So let's get into the episode. So, okay. So for you, the sort of protocol would be, if I'm going to kind of put on my clinical nutritionist Mm. hat and my clinician hat, one is the nervous system regulation. That's foundational. That needs to be continuing restorative yoga, breath work practices, mindfulness practices, and in the moment, practices based on just moment to moment need to kind of shift back to that calm aliveness, take a break, lay in nature, do five minutes of breath work, integrating that not just as a practice, but as a day-to-day kind of support strategy. Then step two, I think is sort of a combination of a few things. One is first, we have to open the pathways of detoxification because with an underlying symptomatology or an underlying condition of endo and with COVID, we know the toxic bucket is too heavy. And what are all the toxins that can be contributing? Well, it's environmental toxins, it's things like microplastics and air pollution and water pollution and heavy metals and uh, and then there's the infectious toxins, chronic infections, another COVID infection, you know, whether you have a history of EBV or CMV or anything else. And we can measure all these things, but I've kind of learned that that's sort of unnecessary. Like all of us carry some level of uh, infectious burden. And then there's the um, stressor of nutrition and activity that we have a little more kind of direct control over. For most people with long COVID, we can get really granular with the nutrition plan. For some people, fasting really helps because it's that autophagy cleanup of the, you were saying, like you have a sense that at a deep cellular level, Mm -hmm. 
things are damaged. And we do have to integrate some autophagy strategies to clean up the zombie mitochondria, the zombie cells. And we'll circle back to that. But fasting is one way that can be done. So for many people with long COVID, it feels valuable to fast, sometimes just intermittent fasting, which I I recommend for people in perimenopause after they have some stability in their endocrine system and their stress resilient stress system, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal system and thyroid, or just make it a kind of a normal fast first, which would be just 12 hours overnight is a good place to start. There are other tools that help clean up those zombie cells if fasting feels too debilitating because it can actually be a form of stress if we go too deep. There are some people who really thrive post-COVID on a ketogenic diet, which is at some level the same thing. Um, And there are others who just, we also want to optimize the composition of the gut microbiome, which is a key part of the immune system to protecting us from a, a future infection from being as severe. You now have some uh, degree of immunity, but you know the, this virus is mutating all the time. So we want to really build our own systems as well. So, what are you currently eating, and what do you? How are you feeling about that? It's mainly plant based, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm not, you know, a meat eater. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I was never one, and uh, so I. What I added, it's electrolyte and BCAA. It was really helpful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I, yeah, mostly eat, you know, fruits, vegetable, you know, the rainbow uh, colors in the beans. Are you having beans, grains, anything? Beans, Uh uh, grains, uh, nuts, uh, Mm -hmm. lots of nuts and seeds and seeds. And, once in a while, um, I will eat some fish and, mm-hmm. um, and also, you know, uh, yeah, a lot of water. And, uh, I found, you know, in the process that electrolyte and BCAA, uh, it was really helpful. That's good. So, okay. So that new nutrition plan is very supportive of a diverse gut microbiome, which is mm-hmm. going to be really valuable in this case. The thing we have to be mindful of with a plant-based, relatively carbohydrate-heavy diet is blood sugar instability Mm -hmm. and also given that you have low testosterone. So this can be very healthy, but we want to make sure you have enough protein and enough fat. So the nuts are good. We can do avocado. We can do olives, Mm -hmm. olive oils, um, fish occasionally. Uh, You're doing a branch chain amino acid supplement. We could also do another plant-based protein powder supplement, um, collagen powder supplement, creatine supplement, which is going to promote Mm -hmm. that like muscle building because muscle, again, we have to do it slow because we can't do like jump into heavy lifting, but starting to rebuild that muscle, the amino acid bank of having more lean muscle mass is protective for kind of any future, Mm -hmm. anything from a fall or an injury or uh, something like that to uh, another infection of any kind. So I love that foundation. And then I would recommend that you wear a continuous glucose monitor for two to four weeks if possible and see kind of what the blood sugar is looking like. Any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I have one. <laughs> I have to put it, you know, on my arm. So yeah. I will. And also, I noticed that you know, fasting uh, is not really helpful for me. Uh, I yeah, I can feel you know this fatigue or um yeah, it's not supportive, you know, in a way. And um, and also yeah, but um, yeah, I think also adding more protein or you know vegetal protein would help Mm -hmm. and um but still um you know i can build muscles um i can feel uh i had you i had it 
added also some progressive uh, weight, you know, training. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was more functional and I could, you know, feel also the, the difference. And uh, So that yeah. felt good for you? It didn't really cause too much crashing? Uh, because that's really progressive. Uh, very slow. Uh, very yeah. slow, but still you know my muscles work yeah. okay and, good uh, good yeah yeah <laughs> but it's really progressive yeah but regarding you know the nutrition uh i i totally agree so adding my yeah another source of protein because you know also in um in lentils and, and mm -hmm. other things maybe that's not enough or i need more and also when you know um, if I am, I'm entering, you know, in the menopause, so I will need more of that. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, there's so many things overlapping that I think would have you benefit from building muscle gently. And it can be mm. in lots of different ways. It doesn't have to be like CrossFit, powerlifting, anything like that. Exactly what you're talking about. And in fact, with the dysautonomia, one of the challenges is strength training in an upright position, because you're going to have that blood pressure, heart rate dysregulation. So I have found that a lot of people do better with slow progressive exercise close to the ground, Pilates style, or just in positions that there's a bit more parallel to the ground mm -hmm. so that we're stabilizing the autonomic nervous system from a cardiovascular and blood pressure standpoint. Also, pre-exercise can be really valuable to do the electrolytes, some salt water, something like LMNT, um, element uh, electrolytes. There are lots of different good brands of electrolytes, but those that emphasize sodium are going to help with the, that mm -hmm. adrenal stability, stability. So your kind of endocrine stabilization and stress resilience, which exercise is a controlled stressor, and to nourish the um, dysautonomia. So I think those minor tweaks. And then the other thing I was thinking between the blood pressure dysregulation and the fact that you're vegetarian, people primarily, or at least a pescatarian, mm -hmm. people who are not eating meat, I find benefit the most from a tool called peptide bioregulators, which essentially mm -hmm. are these oral bioregulator peptides that are all of the research it has primarily been done in Russia although there's some US based longevity research using peptide bioregulators and they are basically organ meats uh, in a capsule of different and they're they're well raised animals so they're good quality but they're of different organs. So for you, given the, the blood pressure, blood sugar, well, more of the blood pressure challenges and the energy challenges and the vascular challenges, the three that I would start with are thyroid, um, vascular, and, uh, and the kidney for the blood pressure. So I, I'm forgetting the kidney one. I think it's called pylotax. The thyroid is thyreogen and vent fort is the one for the vascular system. Um, so that could add this like boost. And I would do two capsules of each daily for three. I would do it for three to six months and then kind of go off it for a couple of weeks and see how you feel. If you need to go back on it, you can. Um, but it might just restore those mm. organ systems enough because the thing about, that we do know about COVID, we have data that for up to at least a year, however long they stopped the studies with every study, COVID viral reservoirs can live in absolutely any organ or cell system. So they can do, can, the COVID infection can, the virus can do continuous damage to organ systems, even if we're not really feeling it on a macro level. So I think those systems could probably use a little bit of support given your blood pressure challenges, particularly, and, and the fact that you do well with electrolytes and things like that. So that Thank nutritional, you. you're welcome. So that <laughs> nutritional protocol will, the, the, the mm. heavy, complex plant-based diet will really feed a beneficial gut microbiome and that protein support will build that resilience from an immune and metabolic standpoint. And then as we can 
add some strength training that also really helps with the me- metabolic component. Now, how is your digestive your digestive function? Do you have any symptoms, bloating, constipation, anything like that? Um, I had after uh, after the COVID uh, just some pain, you know, uh, on the upper uh, abdomen, and uh, yeah, maybe for a few days or um, yeah, two weeks, I took some digestive enzymes and it was really helpful. Uh, then I stopped and it was okay. Uh, but now, you know, my bowel movement is really regular um, and it's, uh, yeah, elimination is, is really good and I don't have pain, uh, even if sometimes I would eat some, you know, bread or, you know, gluten. Um, I don't so feel it's fine. And uh, in a sense, it brings me also some a kind of energy. But um, mm-hmm. no, yeah, um, digestion is it, it's okay. So I take care also of you know chewing, also being in a calm environment. So uh, I'm very sensitive and much more now to uh, you know the light, noise, smell, people. Uh, I cannot tolerate, you know, having, you know, so much people around or a crowd. And um, so eating, you know, in a calm um, space. Yeah, nice (laughs) mindful uh, eating. Yes, uh, chewing. And then I also, you know, take a break, uh, just lying on, you know, on the side and, and then just lying maybe for five, 10 minutes if I can. And, um, it's so helpful. And uh, yeah, this side is, I would say, okay. Okay. That's really good. And it's so important. And you said a few key things there with that mitochondrial pressure, that low energy, sometimes people don't have enough uh, stomach acid and digestive enzymes mm-hmm. and other digestive juices because it takes a lot of physiologic energy to make mm-hmm. those. So supporting with digestive enzymes, apple cider vinegar, betaine HCL, bitters, things like that can really help with digestion. But the most important thing is to do exactly what you said, eat mindfully, eat slowly, chew. But for those people who can't, who are living with long mm-hmm. COVID and little children or full, you know, super busy jobs or whatever, do use the digestive crutches, the digestive enzymes and betaine and apple cider vinegar, bitters, things like that. All right. So your digestive system is functioning well. We've talked about some refinements to your nutrition. We've talked about the nervous system. The next step is I would be thinking about your energy since that's one of your key goals. So I've used a lot of mitochondrial support in people with long COVID. And I think there's two things we have to address for you. One is vascular health. And your vascular system is does seem to be compromised given some of your symptoms, Mm -hmm. the kind of blue hand, the little hematomas everywhere, the fatigue, which could be a a result of microclotting. So one would be, and especially because you also have underlying endometriosis, there is a genetic SNP called PAI1 or serpene 1 that makes people a little more likely to have trouble breaking down fibrin, uh, fibrinolysis. So you get more adhesions, more um, biofilms around mm. chronic infections and things like that, which can help to hide them or chronic yeast, things like that. So one is the mitochondrial buildup. So the tools we use for that are things like CoQ10. I really mm. like a, a tool called Mitochondrial NRG by Designs for Health because it has CoQ10 and support and tools to support the entire Krebs cycle. So back to the Krebs mm-hmm. cycle. We're always circling back to the Krebs cycle. <laughs> so the, the energy transport chain, right? Uh, electron transport chain. That's so, so important. <laughs> that's right. So little mitochondrial energy, urolithin A, which is actually created from a healthy gut microbiome being fed all the mm-hmm. colorful berries and pomegranate and cranberries and things like that. But we, it, there's no way to measure if you have the gut microbes that produce urolithin A. 
And Mm -hmm. some people have them, some people don't. So it's helpful. We can feed our bodies that just in case we do lots of Mm -hmm. colorful berries, pomegranate, cranberry, things like that. And use um, a urolithin A supplement when you have significant mitochondrial um, challenges. And one of the brands that I've used is called MitoPure. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there are other good ones out there. Um, mitochondrial Energy. I've also used things like MitoQ. Um, so a, a, a mito, several mitochondrial support supplements. And then my absolute favorite in long COVID, which again, I think many people are going to need multiple of these when we have multiple energy deficiency conditions, because endo can also be an endo energy deficiency condition, as can perimenopause. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the other one I really like is NMN with resveratrol, Mm. which is a strong anti-inflammatory. So NMN is um, nucleotide mononucleotide. It's no, it's nicotinamide mononucleotide. It's a form of a B vitamin, and it's it's a precursor to NAD. Um, And some people have had NAD IVs or injections. I just have found that NMN with, especially combined with resveratrol is more effective. And there's, Mm. there's like a chest pain side effect to NAD injections or IVs, which can be stressful for people that have these cardiovascular issues of post COVID. (laughs) Sure. You know, so let's not do that to people and mess up their (laughs) nervous systems more um, and use the NMN, which is a comes in powder form. There may be some liposomal forms. Uh, I really like that. So there are a suite of tools for the mitochondria in addition to all of these nourishing foods that support the mitochondria. Um, including things like amino acids, which you're getting in your branched chain amino Mm. acid supplementation. We can use in protein powders, meat, fish, you know, all of these strongly bioavailable amino acid resources. So then we're thinking about clotting and stickiness, right? The biofilms, Mm. the the, um, inflamed kind of adhesions, which can happen with endo. And there are several proteolytic enzymes that seem to work. There's a study going on right now at Mount Sinai looking at lumbrokinase and long COVID, which is a, so you take these proteolytic enzymes or enzymes that break up these proteins mm-hmm. that form adhesions and biofilms um, away from food because otherwise they'll just function as digestive enzymes and mm-hmm. break down the food. But if you take them an hour before or two hours after a meal, then it's going to start breaking down these tissues. Now, again, especially with uh, long COVID or other chronic viruses, we want to go really slow because we don't want to just release all of this infection into the system when the immune system is is weak. Mm-hmm. So lowest dose possible. So lumbrokinase is under study for long COVID. We don't have the results of that yet. Um, so we're everyone's kind of just doing this by educated guesses. Lumbrokinase kinase, natokinase. I've used a plain protease from Transformation Enzymes, has just a general protease. Enzyme-rich foods like kiwi, ginger, pineapple, Mm -hmm. papaya. So you're eating this diverse plant-based diet. You can include really enzyme-rich foods. Also green juices are very rich in enzymes. So the raw greens, um, and then another product is Wobenzyme, which I've used because I've had a lot of pain with my long COVID. And Wobenzyme is best studied as a proteolytic enzyme for orthopedic pain, but I find it works great for headaches, for kind of the like, even the neurovascular pain of, of long COVID. So Wobenzyme is another version. It's a German proteolytic enzyme. And then the one that's most used for endometriosis is serapeptase. Again, no mm-hmm. clinical data, but we do have some survey data that about 13% of women with endometriosis use serapeptase to help manage their pain. And it's probably breaking down some of those inflamed adhesions. Mm-hmm. So I would sort of, at this point, the best thing we can do, especially with a person of your knowledge, is intuitively choose a place to start. Have you used any of these proteolytic enzymes? 
I I think that I um, I use you know as a digestive enzyme I use uh, natto kinase. Natto kinase, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Natto, yeah, kinase, and uh, and that I just feel yeah I would try you know with any chain and um, revestrol. Mm-hmm, um, oh, and yeah, NMN. Mm-hmm. NMN, NMN, sorry. And uh, yeah, and also, uh, you know, Q10, uh, I think uh, that's a good support too. Um, yeah. And also, really good for women post post COVID who are struggling with fertility because, uh, and there's a mm. whole other peptide bioregulator protocol for fertility that works really well in. Like early, like early perimenopause, even late perimenopause, or women that their fertility has been knocked out by long COVID. So we can get into that in another episode. But um, anyway, so something to break up the biofilms, adhesions, and mm-hmm. microclots, which will help with energy too, because there's a sense of oxygenation to the mm-hmm. tissues when microclots are break, broken up with things like natokinase or lumbar kinase. And so I'm really inc- excited to see the results of those studies. But in the meantime, we're just using them in an educated guest sort of way. Yeah. Also for that vascular nourishment, because oxygen delivery is one of the key problems with long COVID, uh, is things like beet powder, greens and reds powders, There is a vascular and arterial um, lining support Mm -hmm. supplements called Vasconox and Arterosil, which are made by Calroy um, Company, supplement company. There's a similar one at Designs for Health too, I think also called Vasconox. Um, So these are kind of components of greens and reds powders that are really strong uh, polyphenol nourishment for Mm -hmm. nitric oxide and healing of the lining of the vessels. So some of the post-COVID vascular pain is probably a a waking up, if you will, of Lyme, because sometimes Lyme, uh, Mm -hmm. Bartonella, infects the neurovascular system, those really delicate kind of tissues, endothelial tissues and the nerves themselves. So we're just slowly trying to get those guys back in in the cell, (laughs) quiet back down. But in the meantime, we can keep working on the inflammation with those kinds of tools. And again, a very colorful plant-based diet, beets, beet powders, Mm. greens, leafy greens, green tea, fish oils, uh, or vitamin D are also really good tools. Mm. A lot of people with long COVID just have a lot of inflammation. You're not dealing with that quite as much because of your lifestyle Mm. was so dialed in, but something to be aware of at kind of the next Mm -hmm. level while things are still flaring. Yeah. And I really appreciate also all the recommendation and also that you said, you know, when, you know, we break down all these things and we have this elimination process, we want that to move, you know, out of the body and not, you know, circulating, you know, inside. And uh, and sometimes I see, you know, it's forgotten, you know, in mm. the process. So uh, we have to keep that in check also. Yeah. So circling back to that a bit. So this is why it's so key that all of our clients are having great bowel movements. You're doing a good yeah. job with that. Sweating, as we talked about. Breathing through the nose, particularly the left nostril, can calm the the autonomic nervous system, but Mm. also promotes nitric oxide dilation of the vessels, which is really healing for the vessels. So breath work is also a form of elimination. So especially for people who are having a lot of anxiety or heart rate uh, irregularities related to this, you can actually kind of hold the, the base of the breast and stretch it up which actually is a form of fascial release to the entire rib cage, cardiac fascia. You can do it with breathing. So Mm -hmm. if you don't have any manual therapy background, if you're not a physical therapist or a manual therapist or a craniosacral therapist, you might want to, you would really benefit from seeing one as a part of this because moving the fascia, moving the lymph is a really deep form of cellular elimination. Uh, Rebounding, 
rotational movements, like you said, just moving, mm. yoga, you know, when, when we're sick, we kind of sit like this all the time, right? Like we lose this sort of like yeah, just uh, opening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because when you're tired and you're trying to just kind of like work and go to bed, you mo- you miss some of the full range mm. of motion that actually helps with cellular detoxification. And yeah. that includes various kinds of breathing, deep breaths, circular breath, breathing into the back body. We could go, we could have a whole episode on kinds Mm -hmm. of breathing, but I recommend seeing a skillful yoga teacher, women's health coach, um, manual therapist, visceral expert therapist, craniosacral therapist, fascial mobility therapist, like getting the tissues really moving. But if you don't have access to those people, you can do dry brushing. There's great videos on, and even if you do, do all these things. Like the more we move the lymph, the better. Um, but there's a wonderful physical therapist on YouTube. She, her moniker is Cancer PT, and she does a lot of great videos on dry brushing and massage and lymph drainage massage and gua sha. All of these things are really, really good for us, and we can do them at home, mm. no very little cost. And then there's a company that I think is out of Canada, but it may actually be the US, called Physica Energetics which is homeopathic strategies to keep moving the lymph. My favorite is a combination of the adrenal milieu because many of us are under a lot of stress in this kind of constellation of endo, perimenopause, long COVID. Drainage milieu, which is about that cellular drainage. And they have three lymph products. Lymph one is like when things are acute, when you're detoxing through the skin. So if you've got acne or eczema or things like that. Two is if it's a bit more chronic and three, if it's really chronic, if you don't know where to start, start with two. In your case, I would start with two for about a month. And then I would actually go to three as long as you're eliminating really well. Like let's get deep into the cells to Mm -hmm. do more detoxification, if you will, lymph mo- yeah. or cellular mo- mobility. Okay. So we've addressed detoxification, uh, digestion, microbiome to support the immune system, uh, nervous system regulation. And so finally, the last sort of recommendation category in, in a case like yours would be immune resilience. And a couple of things are really key to this. The pre and probiotics to, you know, when you're doing a lot of that with Mm -hmm. food, there are a couple of probiotics that have been shown to help uh, eliminate COVID in the system. And these are spore-based probiotics, Tundrix or, and this is not, I don't believe we have a clinical trial on Megaspore, but it's a very similar product to Mm -hmm. Tundrix. So that can be good. And then the prebiotics, um, inulin, or microbiome labs that makes Megaspore also makes a prebiotic, um, it's just called Megapre. It's a number of prebiotic fibers. The only time I'm a little cautious with going directly to kind of those strong probiotics is if someone has mast cell Mm. activation syndrome, which is really common post-COVID. Sometimes it's the cause of the dysautonomia. Do you feel like itchy, burny, hives, sensitive to everything? Do you have any sense of that? Sometimes. Um, You know, that's more on the skin uh, with, uh, yeah, even some oil, simple oil. Sometimes it happens, but Mm. I don't know if it's because of the vascular system and because when I'm outside, it can be really hot. Inside, it can be, you know... Are cold, and uh, if I put something on the skin, maybe that's a reaction. And uh, so it's worse if you're in the heat. Yeah. Yes. So I would say that those are sort of borderline. That's a borderline mm-hmm. presentation. Could be, uh, and it may not be full blown mast cell activation. It may be more of a like a, a less severe histamine mm-hmm. reaction. So. I would probably start with a gentler probiotic in that case. And my favorite one for people that are kind of reactive in a histamine way is uh, his, uh, it's by Seeking Health. It's called Probiota Histaminex. See if we can tolerate that. Maybe even just open the capsule and have a little bit um, mm. and then keep 
nourishing the gut microbiome. Slowly though, we want to be able to give some deeper, and I've been able to tolerate this over time, but certainly couldn't at the beginning. Um, and sometimes we need to really stabilize those mast cells. So mm. for people who are really reactive, sometimes this trick contributes to the dysautonomia piece. Sometimes it contributes to burning. We see it in endometriosis with bladder burning, with vulvar burning and pain. Mm. So it doesn't even have to be long COVID. With long COVID, it can be vascular burning. It can be just joint pain. This is the immune system being out of balance, being overreactive. And so we have to be careful of like immune stimulators. I'm I'm really gentle mm -hmm. with things like immune stimulating mushrooms. I mean, doing that a little bit is probably okay, but better to sort of quite, kind of balance the immune system with beneficial prebiotics and probiotics, but going really slow. So we're not feeling the burn in any of these areas or breaking out in hives or things like that, or having trouble sleeping, breathing, shortness of breath, things like that can be related to this. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we need a mast cell stabilizer. Pycnogenol works really well. It's been studied in endometriosis as well. Mm -hmm. Quercetin is one of my favorites. Like uh, you know, douse yourself in buckets of quercetin. And it's also an <laughs> autophagy inducer. So it'll help clean up the um, zombie mitochondria. Uh, you know, vegan French onion soup. There are supplements like dehist and hysteresist, things like that. Um, and then I've found medications like ketotophen. Ketotophen is good because it's a mast cell st stabilizer, not just a histamine blocker. So if we're only using H1 and H2 blockers, sometimes the system begins to just make more histamine because the mm -hmm. receptors are blocked. But if you also stabilize the mast cell with either ketotophen or which is compounded orally or cromlin sodium, then, you know, and again, these things have to be taken for a while before the system begins to unwind and it may be something we're on for a longer term. But then some of these other things can progress. Taking more powerful probiotics really help settle the immune system. And the other key tool I've used to settle the immune system, which I find really valuable for my patients with endo and long COVID is low dose immunotherapy. It's kind of a homeopathic version of allergy shots to just make the system less reactive. Again, we all have these things, right? We all have mold exposure. We all have yeast exposure. We all have, not all of us have chronic, you know, a Lyme, but 95% of us have Epstein-Barr. You know, we, a lot of us are living with these things as a part of the terrain with, without us bothering, without bothering us at all. Like how many people live in mold? 80% of the United States homes have mold. So pretty much everybody, but not everyone is reactive. And that's what the low-dose immunotherapy can do. So um, I recommend working with Dr. Ginger Nash in mm. the United States. There are other people who can work with you, but that would be useful potentially as well. For you, I think it's a bit borderline. You can try and see if you can tolerate some of the probiotics and you may not need such an aggressive mast cell stabilizing, but adding like some quercetin, more onions, more apples, Pycnogenol for a month, something like that to just sort of settle down the immune system can be helpful. How does that sound? Sounds good. And um, thank you for, uh, you know, all this recommendation. I'm really grateful uh, for this. And uh, yeah, I have a different direction also to, to go. And uh, yeah, that's uh, really good insights. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, it's tricky because there's, this is a really deep and vast protocol that I've suggested. And we never do this all at once. We're doing <laughs> this for, step. yeah, we're yeah. doing this kind of just for the show here to give everyone an understanding yeah. of how we address this, but you're very knowledgeable. You know, you're in our alumni association. We talk all the time. We can implement this <laughs> one piece at a time, especially in a sensitive situation like endo, long COVID, perimenopause, because we have to see how the system responds and how quickly, because sometimes it's responding just fine, but we have to be patient with it. All right. So we've regulated nervous system. Mm -hmm. We've balanced. We're working on optimizing gut microbiome. Digestion is great. 
um, your energy. We've got some tools to improve that. And we've got um, immune settling, balancing strategy. The other key thing is to protect ourselves from way too much exposure. And this is a tricky challenge in the, in the current environment. But for people who have had, a, as I say, an abusive relationship with long COVID mm-hmm. right, or with COVID, um, it's, it's wise to take some precautions, you know, meet people outside. Outside is always much better than inside. Or just if you're inside, open the windows, use air cleaners, um, wear masks when you're in populated indoor places. I mean, I go to my all of my daughter's theater shows and I wear a mask. I go to the stores. I wear a mask. You know, you don't have to wear it 24 seven. We it's, there is some risk to chronically dealing with like having a microplastic thing on your face. It's like, but you know what? We can, we can reduce microplastics in lots of other ways. We can stop wearing microplastic leggings and flip flops and all of those things. Right. So lower the toxin load in places where it's more, where it's easier and protect ourselves with N95 and KN95 masks, certainly on airplanes, public transportation, things like that. If there are indoor settings where people need to communicate, you know, there, I think where we all have to come to is our level of calculated risk Mm -hmm. in a way that is, just feels comfortable for us. Um, we're not going to be able to fully avoid this and have that joy and connection that we we want. And there are lots of antiviral herbs. So if you're in an environment where you're going to be more exposed, where you either can't wear a mask or you're actively choosing not to wear a mask, you can take antiviral herbs. I've used Tolavid as the absolute best for long COVID, although that company I don't think is existing anymore. So I'm hoping there's going to be something to replace that. Um, Virusid, you know, monolaurin, lysine. There are lots of antiviral herbs that at least give us some lowering of the viral load potentially of mm-hmm. either COVID or other viruses. And there are tools that sort of quote unquote kill COVID. So let's say let's say I'm giving a lecture in a large conference or something like that, or you're teaching a yoga class and for some reason you can't open all the windows or you can't wear a mask or whatever. You can do that, you know, whenever possible, but let's say it's not going to work out or you choose not to. There are four or five different nasal sprays on the market that lower the viral load right in the nose. You can use CPC mouthwashes to rinse it from the mouth. You can use Lumify eye drops to rinse the eyes afterwards. So we can link some of these things in the show notes, but having Mm -hmm. layers of protection, so ventilation, distance from people, you know, so a lot of times when I'm lecturing at a big conference, I'm, I'm like away from people because I'm up on the stage, right? Um, ventilation in big conference rooms, check the carbon dioxide levels. And then when it makes sense wearing K- KN95 or N95 masks, a lot of times that's much simpler than it seems. And it can really save us, those anyone really, because like I said, you and I happen to get hit with this at whatever time of vulnerability, but this can happen to literally anyone at any time of any age. And so we have to be mindful and there are more and more ways to do that. Um, And then of course, you know, choosing to actively treat those infections is a conversation to have with your doctor or your provider Um, because we also have some antiviral tools, you know, none of them are perfect, just like our vaccines were not perfect, but there, there is value in a lot of individual situations. So, yes. And that's a good reminder also that you made that, you know, just to have these preventive, you know, measures and protective measures because, and that's my case. So I tend to forget that, you know, COVID or other viruses are, you know, in the air and are circulating because we don't, you know, talk so much, you know, as we did during the pandemic. 
And mm-hmm. so we tend to forget also that. So just a reminder yeah, when, you know, you're in a plane or, you know, in a crowded space or inside and you have a lot of people, um, you know, we can protect also ourselves and, uh, and also to support the human system and, uh, and all the other systems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it doesn't have to be a, a widely stressful experience. It's just like, oh, look, we have all these tools. Yeah. Let's mitigate as much as we can in a way that feels also connected to others at whatever level that means for us. And it's also a kind thing to do. You know, you never really know how compromised the people are around you or who's dealing with cancer treatment or anything else that could be going on. So it's, it's not that difficult. And we have these tools, which is unusual in history. So you might as well use them. (laughs) I'm sure, you know, um, and like you said, I mean, there, it's not just COVID, like it's great also not to get the flu with a compromised immune system or a cold or anything. So, um, but it is something that we have to build some kind of comfortable relationship with because Mm -hmm. these things were no longer in the pandemic, if you will, but this virus is endemic, which means it's always going to be here and it continues to mutate. So if we're continuing to live, ignoring that it exists, that's not really ideal either. So... Just All right. With so, it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So to wrap up the final three steps in our process, um, we kind of build these recommendations into a schedule of your absolute actual day to day. Then we make sure you get support, which which is step six, which you just talked about a little bit around your husband, like, oh. I see your body batteries mm-hmm. at 12. Let me see if I can help you, you know. <laughs> so that's super important to get your closest people on board and then layers of people as appropriate. And then to keep revisiting. So step seven is balancing a lot of the things we've already talked about, like mm-hmm. health with living, health with joy and connection, Um it's a it's a moving target that has to be kind of reassessed regularly. Yeah, that's really a dynamic process, you know. When you, you know you start, you do all the things. So that's not the end. That's just you know dynamic. We are dynamic beings, and you have also all these dynamics also in the nature, and uh, and so yeah, uh, yeah, that's a dynamic process, I would say. Yeah, for sure. And you're in a dynamic physiologic state of life in that now 45 to like 52, there's going to be these hormonal dynamics through the perimenopause and menopause transition. And we know you have low testosterone now. We'll see what happens with the continuous glucose monitor that may getting your blood sugar optimized may resolve that, but you may need some testosterone support or some maca to help nourish the adaptogens to create more for your body to, to release more testosterone. Um, and your estrogen will at some point decline and your progesterone will at some point decline. So hormonal supplementation in alignment with adaptogenic supplementation, which means supporting that whole system of the endocrine system, the adrenals, the thyroid, you know, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone is a dynamic thing that we're going to be, that we have even more tools that we haven't gotten into today. And we'll get into another episode because this is pretty, very intense, (laughs) (laughs) whole whole other topic. But I think that's also key to remember as, as women who may be transitioning through pregnancy, postpartum, perimenopause, menopause, the physiology is also dynamic. So we have to check back in regularly. Yeah. And listening to our body and, uh, and also, yeah, just to take the time to rest, to pause, and uh, and you know, even at the perimenopause, menopause, or different stages in life, so we tend to 
to be busy, to have a lot of, you know, maybe pressure or activities or, and um, that's for our good, just to have this maybe pause and to take care of our health and well-being and happiness yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. And just pause and reassess, like what makes us happy, exactly. what's most important, all of that. Yes. Excellent. Well, thank you so, so much for being so vulnerable and sharing your story. And I hope this felt valuable to you. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really grateful and uh, I will keep you posted also with, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In the few next uh, weeks and months. So thank yeah. you so and much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And remember, for those of you listening, that this is a longer dynamic process. This kind of support that we do with our clients is going to take a minimum of six months up to, you know, I mean, it can be off and on lifelong, but six months to two years is kind of a normal phase of someone really learning how to integrate all of this into their lives. So don't feel overwhelmed and fire hosed by this really deep conversation full of Sweat. lots of to do's, if you will. This is a dynamic slow, supported process within this container of health coaching that um, we're very patient with. There's absolutely no rush. Yeah. So That's really step by step. And so we can integrate this, you know, in our daily life in a sustainable way. And uh, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here, thank everyone. You. Thank you. And thank you for being such a wonderful guest. And we'll see you everyone soon. Bye-bye.